Hello everybody and welcome to episode 73 of Resident's Arcade, the third episode in our current or first season, whatever we want to call it, I suppose it's our first season, uh, of the new format. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Chris and as usual I'm joined by my co-host Matt and Dens. Also joining us is yet another guest. We are absolutely spoiling everybody who's listening, all the millions and millions of podcast listeners that we have. Um, who, very much like Thornton last week, has been on the show previously, in its previous incarnation. Hello, Leon. Why don't you give everybody an uh, uh, update as to what you've been doing since last time, and uh, we'll start the show. Well, yes, I'd be Leon from the Game Over Year podcast. The podcast is kind of on hiatus, so I am now just a Twitch streamer, now playing them video games all the times, and uh, yeah, having a lot of fun with it. Playing uh, every Monday, uh, sorry, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and uh, uh, starting at six thirty PM. Uh, so yeah, you've got a come, solid come schedule. Oh That's yeah, it's impressive. a solid schedule every 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 Monday, Wednesday. I'll see. <laughs> I have dropped Wednesday oh. for you guys, especially. Oh, like this week. So, I feel privileged. So, I do yeah, feel yeah. absolutely <laughs> privileged. So you've now revealed to everybody what time we pre-record our uh, show. We've never done that before. <laughs> Nobody knew that. So now that means that Denz and Matt are under even more pressure to get this episode out as quickly as possible after <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> so yes, thank you very much, Leon, and absolutely wonderful to have you back. So, Dens, over to you. What's uh, coming up in our flashback section today? So this week we'll be chatting about Clay Entertainment's 2D asymmetric survival game, Don't Starve, getting hands-on with Gears of War 4 on PC, and discussing the indie role-playing tabletop game within a video game, Knights of Pen and Paper. We didn't get a chance to discuss Chris's game in our Looking Forward to section last week, so we're going to be chatting about another Clay game, Oxygen Not Included. Danny's been getting all wet for his new Dying Light 2 gameplay demo, and Leon brings with him his opinion on Starbase, an ambitious space-based MMO from the same development team that brought us the Trine series. Absolutely great stuff, and as always, thank, uh, let's, be, let's get started with our competition. What are you selling? What are you buying? I think I'll keep that. I like that. I like your response there, Matt. It's, uh... What are you buying? Yeah. What are you no, buying? no, Danny, I, I did it first. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't try and get in on it now, Danny. You've welded at the party. <laughs> <laughs> the ship has for, sailed <laughs> for, the, for the benefit of our esteemed guest and of course any new new podcast listeners this is a competition that we run every single week um, and essentially one of the hosts tries to sell a game to the rest of us and it's usually a game that we haven't played but Matt has fucked up once again this week, excuse the language and um, he's decided to just drop it on us in the last second and half of us have played it but we're going to go with it anyway um, essentially we have to he has to try to sell, sell the game to us in two minutes. After the two minutes, we all vote on whether we would buy it at full price or at sale price. Simple as that. You get one point for full price, what, half a point for sale price. And the guest can also award points. So if we've got a guest, the person who on board has uh, additional points at stake here. So, Danny. Not Danny. Matt. Sorry. Oh, wrong, wrong <laughs> cover. You'd think job. I was professional there, wouldn't you? Um, get the timer up. You have two minutes to sell. What game? <clears throat> Go. Undertale. So, it was created by Toby Fox in its entirety, with him writing, publishing, developing, and composing the music in the game, with only minor outside help from some art assets. It was developed using the Game Maker Studio package, as prior to this, Toby Fox was primarily a composer, outside of some experience making ROM hacks of Earthbound. Is it obvious that I'm reading off of a script? The <laughs> gameplay is a hybrid of RPG elements, featuring classic turn-based combat with a bullet hell twist. When you're attacked by a monster in the world, they all have unique bullet hell style mini games in which you have to move your heart out of harm's way or suffer damage. When fighting monsters, you are not required to kill them. And if you can finish the game without killing anyone, I misread that. This changes the story and ending of the game. And generally, it's more interesting to keep the enemies alive as they are one of the biggest sources of entertainment in the game, much like I am the biggest source of entertainment on this podcast. The plot of the game is located in the underground, a place where monsters were banished after a war between them and the humans. You play as a human child who accidentally falls into the underground where you were initially found by a sentient sunflower called Flower who attempts one to murder you left. and steal your soul. <laughs> Before you are saved by Toriel, a motherly goat-like monster who wants to protect you from the king of the underground. Eventually, you leave Toriel and attempt to take your escape back to the human world, coming across a very diverse group of characters, including novelies, zealous skeletons, a mad scientist obsessed with human anime, and a killer robot programmed with the personality of a TV presenter. 
Well, the game is a very simple outfit. It's a very evocative and captures the mood of the world very well. It turns <laughs> a fucking review. <laughs> it in turns appearing bright and joyful before becoming dark and oppressive. The mechanics of the gameplay are simple seconds. and fine, offer a massive amount of variation with puzzles and mini games littering the world. This is backed up with Toby Fox's music, which is generally entertaining to listen to and fits excellently into the world, giving each location its own distinct flavor and mood. The game builds into a satisfying <laughs> conclusion with variations at the ending, depending on whether you take the pacifist or killing route, ultimately leading to one of the most interesting final boss fights I have ever experienced. Ten the seconds. Pro- progression of the game is excellently paced, and you never feel like you're getting bored um, is an option. The game focuses on hitting the positives, and Three, in the seven hours two, it took me to complete, I never one. once felt like it outstayed its welcome. Oh. Whoa. Whoa, right. Catch can me on take a minute. Of we, zero punctuation. Can we take a minute to digest that? Like, I, I just want to say, from now on, <laughs> there is going to be a, a, a rule, a, well, not just a word limit, but a rule that you are not allowed to read somebody else's review. There's That's no not somebody else's review. I wrote fucked. that. You can fuck off. I spent ages <laughs> writing that today. <laughs> IGN gave my review five out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> I literally spent so, about like forty-five minutes writing that, and it now, took me two minutes I, to read it. I just want to say, <laughs> just want to say, Matt, that I spoke over when you announced what game it was, so we don't know what game it was. Um, it was COD Call of Duty. Call of Duty. <laughs> right. <laughs> It was okay, undertale. right. So now, what what we're allowed to do, and we're going to let the guest go first, um, is we're allowed to ask three questions each. Should I of tell the game. you how? When do I tell you how much it costs? Oh, is that at the end? Yeah, yeah, you tell us later. Tell us later. Okay, we'll we'll okay, ask the questions okay. first. Um, so, Leon, do you have a question for Undertale? Did, was there anything mm. that could possibly happen in the game that Matt did not get into that two minutes? I mean, like, I think he did literally probably tell the entire story there and somehow in that two minutes which uh, i mean may i say impressive like i mean uh, i mean i think i would i i could have i think i probably passed out actually like how i nearly ran out of like, breath like... <laughs> <laughs> hold in mind <laughs> have you heard my rap career on soundcloud <laughs> Oh my God. So honestly, do you have any serious questions for Matt? Uh, I mean, I don't think I don't think I do. I think yeah, I think Matt, you've uh, you've definitely uh, put a lot, put a good argument there for your game. But you know, uh, I will move it on to elsewhere. So I definitely don't have any questions on that. Like- that right? Okay. So again, full disclosure, I played it recently. I actually got the game um, on the Steam sale uh, in summer. I got it for a few quid, and I thought I'll give it a go because it's been on my list for ages. Um, I'm not going to give you a conclusion on it, but I, I I played it a little bit, but not loads. And I think, did you say, Leon, that you played it a little bit, but not loads as well? That's right, yeah. It's because it was on the Xbox Game Pass. Um, um, so, um, yeah, well, well, the Ultimate Pass as well, and PC kind of thing as well. Um, so I had a little go and was just like, mm, um, nah, but I mean, you know. <laughs> So, you know, oh, Danny, do you, seems like you haven't played it. Then, what have you got any questions? Yeah, first one. <clears throat> what the fuck was that? Um, <laughs> wait, do you want me to read it again? I can go. No, faster. we're fine. We're fine. <laughs> like, <laughs> Set the timer for one <laughs> minute. It's telling me the oxygen levels are low. <laughs> Hang on. So, then. It's, 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 it's entirely with him, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's. Is is it? It's just, you said it was made in Game Maker, so I can assume from most things that come out of Game Maker, it's just a side-scrolling two D platformer. Is that right? It's not. It's a top-down RPG okay. game. Um, top-down one, all right. So it's a top-down RPG game, and it's it's got a really kind of interesting way of showing the world where it it shows you kind of as much as it needs to. Some levels are literally just all you have is a path. Other levels, you get these really okay. nice pixel art kind of backgrounds, and it 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 does a really good job of kind of painting a scene, particularly with the music. Okay, so it's almost like a fog of war kind of thing going on with the. It doesn't show you. Mm. No, it no, just, it's I'm... just partial environments. Right. Think about yeah. like. So it's an incomplete game. What we're saying is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd say that. <laughs> okay. Um... Okay, I've got, I've got a question then. Um, why? Why did I'm pres- you're selling it to us because you like it? Yeah. What is it you like? What's the What's the key thing that you like about the game? The key thing I enjoyed about the game was it just, it really kept me engaged uh, predominantly because of the characterization, the characters that you meet in it, like the, they're all quirky, but they never get tiring. They, they never really bore you with the characters because there's such a roster of different characters that you meet. 
and depending on how you play the game, you you may kill them when you play them, or you might not. But the fun in the game comes from the, taking the pacifist route. So if you keep them alive, you get these interesting interactions, and they're all they're all funny without becoming like you know too sticky. It, it's entertaining without being too like over the top, and right. it just it, it drives everything nicely to the end. Okay. So Leon, have you got any questions yet? Uh, I mean, I, I'd like to sort of get your kind of take on the the whole sort of, I don't know, maybe combat kind of side of things. Because, yeah. I mean, when I kind of played it a little bit, you know, it's kind of like sort of more of a kind of like a puzzle kind of vibe or, you know, like a bullet hell maybe thing as well. You're like trying to move and avoid things as well. I just kind of was, for me, when I was playing it, I didn't kind of, I didn't kind of get it. And I was sort of wondering if you might be able to explain it a bit more to me and you know, try and make me understand why I, I should be playing this. So do you mean for like the turn-based combat when you actually get into, <clears throat> excuse me, into like a fight as it was? Yeah. Yeah. So basically you have the option of, you can either do the combat stage, which is the standard fight, you know, attack sort of thing, or you can do the, um, you have the option for mercy or for interaction, which allows you to kind of diffuse the fight without killing anyone. But between your moves and their moves, they have these bullet hell sections where basically you have like a little heart. And if that is hit by anything in the environment, you take damage. So it's kind of a, it's a way for you to still be involved while the enemy is taking their turn. You, you have a say in how much damage you receive from the enemy, but every enemy in the game is different. So they all have different, um, different bullet hell sections. So like for one, I think there's one where you're fighting like dogs or like dogs in a suit of armor and you have to, um, I think there's like bones that come across and it's all kind of themed and it's a little bit cute and cutesy and stuff like that, but it's still, it, everyone's a little bit different. And that's, that's kind of the beauty of the game for such a simple game. There's so much variation in how you do the same thing and that's what keeps it going. Danny? How long, what's the replayability of said game like? Is it just a once through kind of deal or? There's three different endings, um, and I think there's a different ending after you play it through. There's also a couple of um, good third, uh, sorry, fourth wall breaking moments, but I don't really want to tell you where or when. Yeah. Okay. But th there was one moment where I killed somebody, and I, th I thought, like, oh, I didn't really want to do that. So I reloaded the game and started again, and I, I got a message up on the screen saying, we know you killed her. Um, you've tried to like get past it, but we still know. And it, it, it was just this really like, shit, I've been caught. <laughs> no <laughs> safe coming for you. You, can't, you, cannot, <laughs> you can't safe scum your way through it. But it's just, it, it's that kind of awareness of the audience that really shines through as well. How long, so my, my next question is, how long is the a playthrough for, to, from start to end? My playthrough was seven hours, but I imagine you could do it a lot quicker. I, I was trying to take my time to kind of interact with stuff and I was trying to make the most of the world because I just, I enjoyed it. I, I really liked the characters and the environment. So I, I was taking my time to explore and look around and talk to people. So you could probably do it in maybe five, but it was seven for me. Could you extend that more or is seven pretty much everything you'll get out of it? I mean, if you replay it, there, there are different endings and you have to play the game through once to get like the final ending. So I guess you could probably, you could probably get everything out of it in maybe like 12 to 15 hours depending on how you play the game right leon any more questions no i th i think i'm i'm pretty solid in my decision already <laughs> okay Dan, any more for you i don't think so i think yeah that's me okay um I th apart from the cost question but i wasn't gonna yeah well that's not a question that's part of the compo um ah. i i've kind of got a question around around the around the again around the combat system when i played it i did not understand what the hell was going on a lot of the time it wasn't clear enough that i i was being good or bad or i mean is i the decisions that you make are they as as simple as it looked because some of the feedback i got from the the enemies just didn't seem to make much sense to me and i don't know if it was a translation i don't think it was a translation issue because i think it's the guy who made it american isn't he yeah i think i think he is i might i might be wrong there sorry if i am um 
and it had a lot of hype when it came out. I, I was I was actually developing my game when it came out, and I was quite heavily involved in the indie community, and it was massive. People were raving about it, and I was like, "Oh, I'll put that on my list. I'll get it whenever I have free, you know, free time." Yeah. Um, but I still don't. I still I didn't get it. I didn't understand what I was doing with the enemies, and I knew that you could have this pacifist route. I knew that much, but I didn't know when I was being good and bad. Can you explain that any more detail? I mean, the good and bad purely kind of comes from the combat, I think. I don't remember any specific times when I was given like an option as like a text option that's like, do you want to be good or bad? It's all through the combat. Right. So you don't have an option to be antagonistic or be peaceful it, and then yeah. do a combat scene or not. It's it's all it's all through how you play the combat scenes, and to the thing is that the pacifist route is probably a, the harder route because you have to figure out what how to kind of diffuse the situation with the enemy. So it's a little bit of a puzzle in itself, and right. some some of them some of them are quite nonsensical. Like I think there's one where again, like there's a dog in a suit of armor, and you have to I think keep like 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 calling him a good boy and stuff like that. But every time you do it, like his head gets like larger. Uh, like or rather his neck gets taller and eventually like it's off screen but then it like circles back around and eventually you win it, it's, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> i mean that's explained it for me thank you that's <laughs> I'm, I'm on board I'm, now <laughs> i'm so glad you understood exactly what i meant by that incredibly bizarre vignette <laughs> all right so i think we've run out of questions then unless leon does have another one yeah I'm, I'm good okay right so let's award points again guests honor um, would you? Well, actually, Matt. Before we do, what is the cost now, currently, and then the cheapest it has been on sale? So the current price on PC is six ninety nine on Steam, with a historical low price of two pound seventy nine. Okay, so Leon, would you buy it at its full price of six ninety nine? Yep. <laughs> okay. Would you buy it at its cheapest price of what was it? Two two pound seventy nine. Two pound seventy nine. Dip. All right, that's zero <laughs> points from Leon. So Dan, would you what, what would you would you buy it at either price? I think I think I'd probably chuck seven quid at it. Just seven quid. Yeah, Oof. the six ninety nine. Right, that's the price. Yep, six ninety nine. Call it seven. They always do the ninety nine thing. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I think I'd give it a go and just see what it's about. Because one thing that has become apparent recently is I don't give things enough of a chance. So I think I would chuck it. Just, it's not that much money. If it was saying fifteen quid, I'd be like out the door. But I think that's <laughs> six ninety nine. I think I'd give it. I'd give it a go. So you'd get for so you give him a full it, point then. If I give him a full point for, right. for, se for seven hours, roughly of taking your time through it and saying that there's more replayability afterwards, saying to twelve to fifteen on average, I think that's worth seven quid to me. If we're right. the... that's awesome. if you would play it that much i played it that's and true. i it is the first game i have ever requested a refund for on steam i i got a refund because i found it so confusing and so so there's zero from me i wouldn't buy it at either price now only because i played it though but i did buy it so i'm gonna have to give you have to by default give you a, a 0.5 no i'm gonna give you 0.25 I'm going to go, I'm going to go against convention and I'm going to half that 1.5. We're going to have to consult the show lawyers for that. I don't know if we can do that. <laughs> um, you're lucky you've got that because I've already played it and you hit us with it at the last moment. So you're getting 0.25 from me. So you get 1.25 points, Matt, this week. Can't that's complain that's fine. I'm good, happy good, with that. It's already ahead of me, so... <laughs> I kind of shot myself in the foot, but I don't really mind. Oh, All right. Okay. So, well done, Matt. You did an exceptional Good job. job there. Drew that out for 20 minutes as well. Good stuff. Right. Okay. So, <laughs> on, to, on to our flashback section. So, this is a, a section where we talk about games that we've played recently or even have a very fond memory of in some at some point in the past. Um, I know a lot of people who would, for example, bring up Skyrim here, even though we have all haven't played it for a couple of years, but it's got a, holds a very fond memory in a lot of people's hearts. So let, again, let's just start start with our guest. What would you like to talk about? What have you played recently, Leon? That's uh, floated your boat. Well, I just uh, sort of, I literally like a couple of weeks ago, I had finally completed a game that I picked up on the Switch. Uh, it only just sort of come out, uh, sort of it was December last year on the Switch, but it is actually 
quite an old game. It came out originally on iOS and Android uh, back in 2012. Mm. Um, it is a uh, turn-based RPG uh, that is called Knights of Pen and Paper. Now, it's kind of a bit of like a, an inception of a game because of the fact that you're playing a game within a game, uh, which is interesting in itself because you're playing uh, essentially a, a, a bunch of guys playing uh, like a, a D and d kind of like tabletop game uh, where you are actually playing as the players and the dungeon master. Uh, and uh, just going through this um, rather sort of quirky, like nerd reference kind of like a uh, field game, um, which I, I I can't believe that I got into so much. It just, uh, it really did capture me. Uh, like, because it, even though like the art style of it is very, you know, very simplistic, uh, sort of reminds me of kind of like, I don't know, maybe like 8-bit sort of uh, kind of days. Um, but like main mechanics wise, you're, you can basically, uh, you start off with um, two players and the dungeon master, and then later on, uh, sort of throughout the game, you can unlock to be able to have five players. Um, now, like you can select kind of what characters that you, you're, which, who are going to be your players. Um, so in other words, like for example, you'll have like the, a pizza guy that you could have there as one of your players um, who gives you like a, it's like a 50% discount to buy that player. Or you could get the jock, uh, for example, that uh, gives you a plus one to your attack rolls. Um, and then, you know, after selecting that partic those particular characters, you can have all of the classes that you would kind of expect, like in a D&D &D kind of game, you know, like your rogue or uh, your warrior, cleric, uh, knight, you know, all, all, of, all, of the good, all of the goodies that you expect in any RPG game. Um, I think the thing what I really do like about it is that it's kind of, you, you can actually see the table there throughout the game and the backgrounds kind of change, uh, you know, depending on where you're, uh, where you are. So like, for instance, you start in like a tower prison uh, and, you know, so which you see like all the, the sort of the prison attire, but you see them all like sitting there at the table, the dungeon master at the helm. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's really, it's really quite refreshing kind of seeing that kind of vibe because of the fact that it's it's not something that you usually see you know that that sheer you know that the actual the game within a game and uh, I, th I think that's kind of why because I like kind of D&D &D and like I've I've played D&D &D like a lot in the in the past it kind of like it made me sort of get into that vibe and I'm like yeah cool I'm around the table as well and I'm gonna pick my character see, I've know, not like... I've not played that many tabletop <laughs> games I've played lots of card games um <laughs> table table card games and or real life card games rather um and I've played like Warhammer Dungeons mm -hmm. and uh, not Dungeons and Dragons the Hero Quest before Warhammer mm -hmm. Blood Bowl, that kind of thing, you know, the the um the games workshop stuff. But yeah. I've also played Knights and Pen and Paper. I got it at least two or three years ago on a sale mm -hmm. for next to nothing. It was about a quid, I think. Mm -hmm. And I had loads of fun playing it. Yeah. A really good game, really enjoyable, well designed, mm -hmm. pretty environments. Again, it's just mm -hmm. a eight bit game, but really liked it. And yeah, the class system and the little the little nods to to nerd loads of little nerd references and stuff, really good. Um, yeah, certainly worth a punt if you if you like that kind of thing and you like Definitely. tabletop games, um, especially the Dungeons and Dragons type thing. I imagine, which I still yeah. haven't played and I really want to play. Oh man, you totally should. It's it's really it's a lot of fun. It's a lot. Uh, of do fun. you know there's a second one out? Uh, yes, and I've got it on the Switch as well. Ah. I basically I bought them both at the same time, so I've played through the first, and I, I haven't. I started the second one, but it it doesn't have the same feel as no? the first one does at the moment. But I'm going to persevere with it anyway, and sort of you know see where it takes me. But you know, like the first one, just with the the sheer references, like I mean, like the fact of that, uh, you know, one of the characters. I mean, I've got my Pokemon hat, like oddly enough, like that. But one of the one of the monsters that you can go up against is the notorious glitch that was in the pokemon games missing no like <laughs> so it's just it's things like that that it just i'm like oh brilliant and like uh, i know that i can necessarily play the game again uh you know with uh, everything that i've done i could do like a new game plus um which i'm kind of maybe thinking about doing um but now that i've kind of unlocked because there, there's um classes that you unlock throughout the game like by doing like certain side yeah, yeah. quests 
Um, so now that I've done that, I could go through the game now and I could necessarily pick them uh, in the first place because there's like uh, there's a gold currency that actually carries over to all of your games. Um, that's just it's just there in general. So I now know that when I sort of buy my first two characters, I'm not going to have to worry about doing the pizza guy to be able to get two characters because uh, I didn't have enough money on my first playthrough. But now I've got all the gold that I want. Mm. So I don't think good. I tried a new game plus. I probably should go. I definitely completed it. I can't remember the end of it though. It's only <laughs> like last year I played it as well, yeah. but. I still, I enjoyed it, and I liked, it was one of them games I kept going back to, and it was very quick as well, you could just jump into it and then jump out, do a few rounds, you know, right. save and, and leave it, um, I liked it. So so what's the actual gameplay of the game? Because I, I've heard a lot about what, what you do, but like, how do you play the game? Well, I mean, it is, it, you know, uh, as you would expect, you know, with any sort of turn-based RPG, it's very much sort of like... Uh, like you would in like D and Z, sort of people roll for initiative. So you'll have like a number that's above all of the monsters and all of the characters. So in other words, you can see what the turn order is, and then you're necessarily going to be picking between four abilities that your character, each of your characters got. So like for instance, like my pizza guy was the mage, and he had four spells. He had a uh, fireball. Um, which is, uh, obviously chucked a fireball at them and it causes like a burn after effect as well. Uh, deep freeze, um, which uh, also like, which, yeah, obviously does an ice damage and freezes the enemy. So like for one turn, they can't do an attack. Um, there's stream, which is actually a, a passive ability because some of them do have a passive, um, which just increases your MP count and uh, meteor which is like a, a like an area of effect kind of attack so uh, as you kind of kind of expect once you've got five like players kind of thing you've got you know four different attacks that you can pick for each of them so in other words you're kind of like looking to kind of get that you know that nice synergy you know like like we do with any rpg games so like going all right okay i need my tanky guy i need my healer you know i need like the, the my damage dealer you know that kind of you're thing. not you're not actually move because you're all sort behind the table you're not moving your characters around you literally you go into an area you you choose a map icon again i might mm -hmm. be slightly inaccurate here because it's a while mm -hmm. since i played it but you choose a map icon you load that area up it presents you with the the image enemies are there or they're not or an event will yeah. occur or something or something will happen and then yeah. the enemies will line up and then you again as you start the actual combat itself but it's like that i haven't played too many games like that but the mm -hmm. the best thing i can compare it to in terms of the combat is final fantasy 7's kind of mm -hmm. you know choose it, it's not in a particular order it's that initiative thing so you you roll for that when you land and then and then you start attacking people with different abilities and different spells yeah. based on what you've bought and what you've mm -hmm. uh, you don't you don't start out with the free spell for example do you you have to gain yeah. that you somehow. have to yeah. yeah you have to put your skill points into it yeah. so like every time you level up um you, yeah you get you get a skill point that you can put into one of your four abilities and like i said like you were saying at the beginning you only you you you, you get a point at the beginning so mm. that you can put it into something so you'll have that one attack so you're obviously going to spread it out at first and then you know the 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 more uh useful attacks for you you're obviously going to put more into um, I think the other thing that I quite like about it is that um, you can kind of pick on how many enemies that you're going against because, like I said, you're playing as the dungeon master as well. So you'll go into an area kind of thing and, you know, the quest line might be say, like, you need to kill uh, seven bats, like, necessarily yeah. in this area. And then, so you can choose on how you want to do that. You could, uh, you know, if you've got the right item, anyway, but you could go, I'm going to do all seven at once and, you know, make it hard for yourself. Or you could go, all right, I'm going to do one oh, at a yeah. time. Forgot about that. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Don't you? you choose the different level when you mm. approach it. Yeah, an area. Yeah. No, I again, I really did enjoy it, and I, I need to play the second. I haven't even booted it up. I haven't even installed it yet, <laughs> but I do want to get. I've got it, but I haven't played it yet. <clears throat> Quite easy to get into. Then you don't, don't have to have any prior knowledge of D and D or anything like that, do you? I, no. I, well, I no, don't, not... and, I, and I've got into oh, it. It's, yeah. I, I said I play very few tabletop games, but I I played that. I don't know why I decided to get it. I just like the look of it. I think and. And had a go, or I might even have seen it on Twitter or something. And somebody went, "Oh, this is good to play. Have a go of it." And did, and I, yeah, really enjoyed it. Rewarding. So you got it, you got it on PC then, Chris? Yeah, yeah, it's PC. Yeah, yeah. 
nice. In Steam. Just through Steam. Nice, decent. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, it's really cheap on Steam as well. Like, I bought it on Switch and it was, I mean, you know, with bloody Nintendo, all of the games <laughs> on there, it's just a ridiculous amount of money. But I don't, I don't care. I'm. It was totally worth it. Uh, you know, it was nice to, like, if I'm sort of, you know, downstairs with the missus, you know, sitting downstairs, you know, I've got my Switch there. I could just, you know, well, I don't know, just watching Coronation Street or something, you know, be like, all right, cool. I'm just going to sit here and play Knights of Pen and Paper. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's move on to Danny then. What are you on to talk about this week? I have picked up Gears of War four, like I said I would last week. Ooh. See, um, I've been I've been hovering my my mouse has been hovering ooh. over the buy the Xbox Live PC pass or whatever, and I, I just haven't got the time at the moment. But I want it. I, there's so many good games on there, and that's one of them. There is. That, yep. Prey included. I'm going to pick well, that up. I've, I've got that. Store, you've already got that, but it's another one that you mentioned. Um, it was oh. literally after the pad. What, State of Decay. Not... State of Decay 2. State of Decay 2 oh, is on there, yeah. Oh, is it? It is on there, yeah, yeah. I've actually been playing the first one again recently. I've sh- shown some mates it, because I, I really like it. It's it's simple, but it's uh, quite a good game to play. Lots of How? bugs in it. How many oh. berries do you have to gather? <laughs> not many, not any, not any. Actually, you have to go and gather um, resources in and uh, clunk around in in houses. And if you make a noise or you you rush it, then you you all the horde just descends on you. And it's actually quite a suspenseful game. And I love the way that you manage. Anyway, I'm I'm hijacking Danny's. Uh, <laughs> Danny's I was thingy. just about to stay there. Where's the real that? <laughs> Get that shit back. To sure. So, Gears of War um... Four. Then, what do you think? I have thoroughly enjoyed it. I've only done the campaign so far, and I'm pretty sure I'm close to the end of it. And I didn't know what they were going to do, because after three, it's sort of like, Mm. all right, done. But no, they managed to... I'm not going to go too far into what happens, but the way it was for me is, in the first third of the game, it's very much different to any Gears of War, because you don't fight against what you'd fought against in one, two, and three. You're fighting against, um, basically the cog have gone a bit nuts and they've started building like shelters, like massive settlements. Don't you mean the knob? The, yeah. And they started to, uh, <laughs> they started to basically automate everything. So like, there's not that many actual cog soldiers left. And this is completely after, you know, emergence day, like well and done with obviously after Gears of War 3. And you're fighting against what are effectively robots for the first third of the game that didn't really appeal to me and i had to push myself through to through that part because it doesn't have the same you know when things just clunk away like and fall to bits like just metal rods that just disintegrate it's not as fun as like getting that horrendous noise of cracking someone's head off with a, with a nasher shotgun <laughs> yeah it was an awesome noise so it took me a little bit to to push through that and it, it is very much not focusing on you don't really see any actual cog gear or anything like that it's almost it's in the same style people have still got bulky like items of clothing on like as they always are in the gears games but you're more focusing on the what called the outsiders so these are people who aren't in the cog at all and they're you know they're basically just foraging off whatever's left of the planet and that bit's all right but then it really it, it took a sudden turn and you go back and you basically find marcus phoenix and that was like okay so here we go and then it just really just spiraled very very quickly into a pretty cool storyline and i'm really really impressed has he got has he got loads of stubble and is he drinking has he turned into an alcoholic and he's beating his wife and stuff no he doesn't have a wife he just has a massive farm but um he's (laughs) i'll do his farm up (laughs) dom (laughs) Back in your hole. <laughs> <laughs> Scratch one, grow. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it takes a quick it awful. takes a quick turn. I know <laughs> it was so bad. I used to be able to do a really good Marcus Phoenix voice. It I takes can't remember a, what he sounds like, so I don't mind. It's cold really train, baby. <laughs> it goes through. Um, it, it, it takes a quick. It takes a, a, a turn. Um, and I'll I can't spoil it, but I really fucking want to talk about it more. Right. Spoil it, but uh-uh. it takes a turn, and I will say you'll enjoy it yeah. massively. It's they've kept the same mechanics, and they've added a few new weapons, but they've kept all the originals. So the new weapons are a bit meh. Are you playing um, it mouse and keyboard or controller? Controller. 
It's just how I've always done gears. I don't think Same I'm going to on my keyboard and mouse. I'm not sure if um, I want to try it on mouse and keyboard or not. I, I, I thought about it for about a nanosecond and went, no, controller, <laughs> and just grabbed it. Um, they've kept most of the... They've got some new weapons in there. They're not that great. They're not the... I don't know. It kind of feels like, how can we make a ridiculous weapon? But doesn't really like... It doesn't really hit home, if you know what I mean. It's just a bit meh. See how they work out in multiplayer, maybe. Yeah, so I think the weapons, are they've added some, but it seems just a bit forced, really, just to sort of explain the first heart, first third of the game that I mentioned. Right. Because effectively, the, the new weapon additions are what the COGS robots would use. So they mm. they were like, they were weaker because they were actually non-lethal weapons. Cause what, a whisk? Didn't... Yeah, like a whisk and... <laughs> Like an oil plunger, an like oil a gun, <laughs> <laughs> groinal attachment. But they were they, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> weapons, <laughs> the weapons were actually non-lethal ones, which can swap to lethal. So a lot weedier than the actual original cog weapons and the locust weapons that they used in you know the Pendulum Wars and the Emergence Day, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, um, I wasn't a big fan of the um, of the locust weapons in general. I might, I might be, I might sacrilege that, but I came across one. Local, uh, locust pistol. I can't remember what it's called. It's not the snub one. It's the Baltock, I think. It's like a revolver, and it oh, the, the big hand cannon, the one. big hand cannon thing, yeah. and that thing still still hits home. Like you know, when you just clock someone's head and it just disintegrates, and it's just <laughs> yes, back in yeah. your hole. <laughs> <laughs> They've still got all of the uh, active reload stuff in as normal. Um, boom shot, talk bow, long shot, that kind of stuff. Through the campaign, it is a little bit like Lost of Ramo. They kind of seem to have done away with, which kind of annoys me, actually, because I prefer to... I don't really like going through with the default, like, Lancer and a shotgun. I like to pick up a long shot and be able to pick up ammo for it and carry it for our good stretch of the game. But they kind of done away with the, re, you know, the ammo dumps and stuff. They don't kind of refill um, those special weapons, which is really, really annoying. Because right. I wanted to practice and get good b before I tried multiplayer. I wanted to get a couple <laughs> talk bow headshots and a, a few bits like that and strike the boom shot in the right place so it just shears someone's head off instead of exploding. That kind of stuff that I used to get on with with gears. But overall, I'm really enjoying it. I'm going to be completing it. I've not got that much left. And I think I might give multiplayer a little try before gears 5 because gears 5 is going to be a very similar um game with the weapons and the sort of progression of it i think right. so overall big recommend i've really been enjoying that in Aww. fact i think i smashed through most of the campaign in like a night or two because i was just hooked as soon as i got in i was like yes the original mechanics basically yeah did you play the gears 5 beta at all no so I've completely left Gears after three and I've not touched anything on it until I was like, hmm, I'll get game I'll get the game pass and I'll yeah. just download it. Well we were talking about it the last podcast and we got all yeah. a little we all got a little bit wet over it. So he, yeah. he went off and bought it like <laughs> I'm the, the only second one afterwards. Fucking bought it by the way. Yeah. And we're still oh, well. waiting for everyone else. I must admit, like I'm gonna be like even more sacrilege here. I I have never, never liked the Gears series ever. I know a lot of people like that. Yeah, I've, I just I've... don't like the um the the cover based combat and the third person uh, you know shooter aspect. It just it never it never resonated properly with me. It felt quite clunky, like sort of getting about the map. But I don't know. I, I can understand that. This Gears is is particularly good at the combat. We were saying this last time actually. It's particularly good at the actual um, cover based combat side of mm. things. Um, it's not, it's not, it's not as clunky in my mm -hmm. opinion as a lot of other cover-based shooters. Mm -hmm. And uh, and once you get into it, the multiplayer is so much fun with a lot of mates. It's so much it fun. Is. Yeah, I find the cover-based system was for me like going back to when I first played Gears. Yes, hard to get used to, but you kind of learn it properly, mm -hmm. and then you can really smoothly get through an area. And I kind of had to deal with that on four because I've not touched it in ages. But I eventually got to the point where I was like. You, you knew what to do with your left analog stick ie where mm -hmm. your camera's looking to be able to pop around a corner and quickly shotgun someone away mm -hmm. that kind of thing because you will just blow them away with that kind of like attack it's i think it boosts your damage in some regard or something i don't know but, yeah yeah i can I completely understand with the third person shooter thing but i think it's because i picked the original game up way you know just back when i was developing a taste for for games so mm -hmm. for me it stuck and that's why i still like it to this day 
And that's fair enough. I didn't pay. I didn't pay a whole lot for the game pass. I think it's like four quid. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, nice. I've got like the ultimate pass until oh, nice. next year sometime. So because like, <laughs> there was like a, an upgrade kind of deal that you could do with your like remaining time. Because I already had bought a year or something like that. So yeah, I'm like I'm good until next year sometime. So I'm gonna give Gears Five a go. I mean, I tried the beta and uh, like. Because I, I was like, oh, yeah, no, I'll do it on stream kind of thing. I'm like, do that Friday night. And I've got an amazing clip on, on my Twitch as well where I had just done the tutorial uh, kind of thing. And I was like, cool, brilliant. Right, cool, I'm in, right? So I'm like trying to queue up for a game. And it's just sort of not happening. So I'm like, oh, you know what? I'll come out of the game, come back in and, you know, see see how the queue goes. And I come back and the timer to be able, for me to be able to get back in said six hours. <laughs> so I was like, uh, see ya. Yeah, beat us, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Nice. So I can't judge it on that. And the thing is, I've got Game Pass anyway, so I'm, I'm definitely going to give it a go for sure. Um, but yeah, like, I don't know. We, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Right, yeah. uh, so on to the next game. We uh, I, I didn't get a chance to talk about any of my games last... Well, no, one of my games last week. So I'm going to uh, talk about two games from the same developer. Uh, first one is a game called Don't Starve, which you probably heard of. It's quite old now. It is a survival game. I'm sorry, guys. It is old. Everyone in the world's <laughs> talked about it. Yes, you do pick berries. You could even dig berry, berry bushes up, replant them, and fertilize them with rotten meat, weirdly, because you do Great. that. Chris, you've got a problem, mate. I don't, Every I don't game... have a problem. I swear to God. Every game you pick has got to have berries in it. Most of them. <laughs> uh, anyway, I've, I've 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 revisited it recently, and I'm not sure why exactly. I think I started it up a few weeks ago with a mate just to show him, like this is you know this is a quick game you can get into. It's so deep and so complicated and so fucking hard. I. I have to put mods on it, and the mods are it doesn't delete your save. So when you die and don't starve, it deletes your save. So if you've played it for 30 days in in-game days and you die for whatever reason, you've a new boss appears or some you know, summit happens or or suddenly winter comes along and you weren't expecting it and you haven't got the buddy earmuffs that you need to create to to stay alive, or you haven't happened to randomly pick up a, a sweater that's good enough for you know that to, to last you the entire winter. Or you haven't got a fire going, or you, or you, or it turns dark while you, um, while you're running around, and you haven't got enough resources to make a torch. You're dead. You're dead instantly. Dead, and that's it. And it's so unforgiving. So I just tend to put this, you know, save scum thing on. Um, but I've been really getting into it again recently. I've, I've discovered, I've, they've either released updates or I didn't play it enough last time. And I've just, I mean, I've just been playing it just before the the stream again today. And uh, this like. Noise starts in the forest, and at one at one point, it's hounds that come and like attack you about day fourteen or something or something like that. Anyway, I dealt with them the first time they came around, but it's in the middle of winter. There's this like big antelope beast thing, and it's like huge, and it just spawned near my base and just destroyed everything. So I've stopped the save, and I'm gonna have to try and get it get it away from my base next. <laughs> so I've saved proper save scummed it because it, it just. <laughs> Yeah, it <laughs> proper destroyed my base. But I'm, I like building things. And oh, no. My only problem with the game is you can't build like a roof. So you can't keep yourself warm. You have to be near a fire of some description in the winter. And oh, So you can, craft, you can craft bunny ears for yourself, but you can't make a roof. Yep. You can build uh, walls, and you can build walls out of either hay, like straw and stuff, or... Um, Rock, I think they're the only two options. You might be able to build one, ones out of logs as well. Um, but I haven't built any walls this time. Last time I spent ages building a wall, and then the hounds just came and ripped everything down. So I'm like, what the fuck's the point? It, honestly, it's just so unforgiving. Have any of you played it in any capacity? I've played the Don't Starve Together game. What did you think of it? Not very. Um, again, hard. And it was only for a night, I think, with a couple of mates. And I don't know. It just, yeah, it just seems like that type. I mean, I think in Don't Starve Together, if you die, you're fine. You can respawn, I think. But if everybody dies, then it, that's game over, I believe. There's a method to respawn again. in the single player as well, but you have to get a certain amount of items and create an effigy of some description or, or create right. a bed. I don't know. It's not even a bed. It's something else. There's a few ways to do it. And I think if you... There's like there's lots of random things around the map as well, and one of them is a, some kind of a totem or something that you can touch yeah. and it, you can respawn there. But 
it's like a one-off, you know. Yeah, um, I found myself too cocky with the game. Like oh, you I can't was, be. Yeah, really no, you just get destroyed. Because my mates were just like, "What are you doing? It's like the fifth time you've died." And I was just like, oh, "I just thought I'd be able to do it, but I, I couldn't." <laughs> so who who here likes survival games? Yeah, I no, definitely. Yeah, yeah I, I don't do. mind them. So every time I play survival games with like the previous um, Resident Arcade hosts, we used to play them all the time. I forced people into playing them because you know they're my thing. <laughs> uh, like we'd play like The Forest, or we'd play Ark Survival Evolved, or Rust, yeah. or something like that. And they'd do one session, and they'd never come back to playing it because they die immediately because they play it like quick. You know, they'd yeah. be trying to bunny hop over over a fucking minefield or something, or they'd, they'd walk into someone else's base and get shot in the face, and it's like, right, well, you, you know, you need to have some resources before you can go and bother the, the other people on the map, you know? Um, yeah. It's like, I, for me, like, Ark, I played Ark, I know it's full of bugs, and it's janky as fucking places, and the developers are absolutely awful people, the worst people on the planet, but it's a really quite a good game when you play it, and you can play it PvE, but to me, it's about building and it's about making bases and making cool shit that you can just you've just got total control over. And the yeah. same applies to even in Don't Starve, I can build a little garden of berry bushes, or I can build a little <laughs> garden of twigs. You know, it it doesn't matter. I just like that shit. I like hoarding crap. Um, <laughs> but my, none of my friends seem to be into that, and it's it's like I'm the only person on the planet I think that. No, I love it, man. I mean, like, I'm just with. I mean, I, every Monday I stream the forest with um, a couple of other sort of streamers, like the Rotty Pack and uh, and Miss Rotty, and uh, yeah, like we play the forest every Monday night, and I'm absolutely loving it because this is my first like actual playthrough of the forest as mm. well. So we've played for I don't know maybe three four weeks now, and we've only just sort of started to go down into sort of like the end game kind of stuff where we've just been building like a base up until now kind of thing. So um, when you say going down into the end game we just started to go into the caves uh well as in like we've been into a lot of the caves we've got like chainsaws ah, right. and all that kind of thing we're actually going down and yeah. you know getting to sort of lab territory some fucking you know scary I mean. shit like, there yeah some scary shit going <laughs> yeah on. there is. <laughs> it is it is a thing of nightmares that game mm. i swear even on the surface it's a thing of nightmares mm. but on down there no 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 yeah yeah is is a whole lot of nope and we're actually uh we're just starting up on arc as well soon and we're probably going to stream that soon as well i just got a really because um um we're playing with some people on xbox as well so i've got like a little cross play kind of server um that i've just picked up so we're gonna we're gonna try that out for for a little bit as well my only criticism of arc is that it is very very grindy if you don't oh yeah uh, if you don't up like the resource gather uh, mm -hmm. it, it just gets too much for me, especially in, an, in a like PvP. Um, well, luckily so. I am in control. Mm -hmm. so Whack it right up to eight times gather and one punch of a tree and you've got a million wood. Your inventory's full. <laughs> wow, I didn't know punching trees turned you on so much, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. yeah, I'm all over those survival games, all over it. So, you know what, Matt, I feel bad. I feel bad that I, I told you before the show because you were late with the update that you couldn't talk about your game this week so go on even though we haven't told the listeners what you're going to talk about go on tell us i'll, I'll keep it short and sweet then shall i just just something nice because basically the thing i've been playing most of this week is wow classic but oh of course yeah of course, yeah, yeah i know I them cues yo <laughs> yeah world of queue craft yeah in fact I've, I've been in a queue for the last four hours and i'm i'm still that's the only reason he's doing the podcast because exactly <laughs> This is all to kill time between WoW, basically. No, it's 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 what I wanted. Though it's old WoW. It's you've got no quality of life. Everything's shit. There's queues for everything. Everybody steals your kills. But do you know what? There's a community again. You can talk to people. You can actually get parties with people and have a laugh with people. It's it's taking it back to what made it great in the first place. And I'm having a great time with it. Would you rather play WoW Classic or the like the modern version of WoW? Right now, I'd rather play classic. Just okay. Because in a month's time. In a month's time, I don't know. I can't. I can't say that it's oh, going to be great. Not predict the future. <laughs> right, hang on. No, no, sorry. Not okay. In a month's time, I want feedback on this. I want to know if you're still playing it. And to be fair, you might even have gone off WoW entirely. You know what those gamers are like. Exactly. You know. It's, uh, but for now, it, it's taken. It's such a strong trip down memory lane. It is like thick with nostalgia, and I'm I'm really enjoying it. 
everything's like nothing's handed to you like modern wow it's like you get to the level 120 it's like here's some epic armor and here's you know oh you know here's all these great things you can go go on run off and do don't worry we'll look after everything but now it's it's like oh well you're level 40 you can afford a mount um apart from you can't afford a mount yeah. so you, must... you can get a mount but you're not having it until you've earned a million gold exactly everything is a challenge everything's a slog and it's like the game hates you and i love it even more for that fair i think that was one thing that notes i've spoken to a couple of people about wild classic and they have said like oh it's just like how i remember it and it's just like so it's a nostalgia based thing at yeah. the minute then we'll obviously we'll and the clues last. in the name you know yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, of course, uh, to be honest, I imagine it's going to die off kind of quick, which is why they've probably only put so many servers up. But for now, I'm enjoying it. Like e- Even if I play it for a couple of weeks and get bored of it, I'm I'm happy at that because at least I've had that opportunity to kind of go back and relive that little bit of being like 15 again. It's just is, nice. Is it subscription-based? Do you have to have an existing WoW subscription or do you get it to play it for free anyway if you don't have a subscription? No, you have to have an. Ex- you don't have to buy the game again. You just have to have, have a subscription. So if if you want to try it, it's nine quid for the month. And right, yeah, I, I think that's. A, if you're going to get the nine quid's worth out of it, then it's worth. It's definitely worth going. At. If I went, like, I'm not going to do it because I don't have time. But if I went back to it and I started up my old account, and for some reason had access to that old email address and password and could remember it, um, would I? Would my like level 86 warrior on blade fist would that be there in classic or would it be only there in the modern version or no, would it not it, even be there it, it'd just be it'd be there in the modern version like i think every expansion up to legion is included now but you have to still All pay right. for the latest expansion so you can play everything up to like level 110 but you have to pay if you want to do the the newest stuff but um, yeah, it, it, basically, it's just there's a new set of servers for classic only. You just have to make a new character. That's all. Right. So you start. Everyone starting from scratch as well. Everyone starting from scratch, which right. is why it took me 45 minutes to do a level four quest yesterday. <laughs> what level are you now? Um, Eleven. <laughs> all right. Well, my fr- I went around my friends last night, and he started it yesterday. I think he, he said it was level seven, and he did nothing but play WoW. You must have done nothing but play WoW plus. I I've I've been off work this week. I've I'm uh, yeah, you temporarily talk- No, no, I'm, I've actually injured myself climbing, so I've, I've not been able to walk. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> how convenient. <laughs> oh look, look, I've got I've got a walking oh, stick and everything. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got two of them in the cupboard, mate. <laughs> I keep yeah. one around just for such an occasion. Yeah. Yeah. I keep one around for when people come to the door and I want rid of them. Just get off. Get off. <laughs> look, Can't you see that I'm disabled? <laughs> Get out. We're claiming benefits next, Matt. Come on. Right. I need one. money for Walker. <laughs> give me, give me, give me. A kick for Kickstarter. Can you build me a new PC? I have only got one functioning leg. <laughs> I remember seeing something like that on Kickstarter. Someone was asking for like 1,600 quid to want to do a music production PC and like not going, offering anything. And I watched it. It was literally five minutes left to go. And just to be a dick, to be a real dick, I... I said, you can have five pounds if it passes. And that's all they got. They did not get a single penny. Right? <laughs> I just wanted them to know that people had in fact seen it and nobody wanted to give them money. You know, <laughs> did you, did you, I might even be mentioned it on the sh- street on the show before, but did you hear about that streamer that, that was in a wheelchair and got yep. up and oh, yeah, they, they started a Patreon smart. <laughs> <laughs> Where he's just like, <laughs> oh, oh shit! Oh shit! Yeah, sorry. I've turned my aimbot off as well. Oh, while I'm <laughs> okay, shit, so notes. Let's notes. <laughs> let's move on. We are we are nearly at the hour mark already, and oh, wow. we've we're not even touched our games that we're looking forward to. We are going to change the format, by the way, coming up in the mm-hmm. next uh, the next uh, episode slightly, just so we can hopefully fit more or fit less in potentially. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll figure out how it's going to work. So let's go. Um, yeah, Leon, what are you looking forward to? What games are, are coming out that you've got your eye on? Well, I mean, I've sort of been getting a lot, uh, getting into a lot of sort of builder games recently. You know, I've been playing like Satisfactory and uh, Forest, all that kind of jazz. And uh, this game sort of caught my eye recently. It's going to be coming out this year at some point in early access. They still haven't given us a bloody release date. Um, but it's by the uh, sort of the developers Frozen Byte. Uh, it's a game called Starbase, and the 
sheer like what they're saying that they're going to be doing it sounds ridiculously ambitious and i mean i'm sure some people are probably very skeptical if they're going to be able to deliver this um do you not but, think right yeah. that the steam videos right I, I had a quick look at this the steam video the immediate reaction i had was that looks like a lot of uh, car kits that you get from a model shop that they've just jammed together <laughs> and to make like this split station in in space yeah yeah, I mean, because I mean, apparently this is going to be a space MMO uh, with like the gameplay kind of focused on building spaceships and and, and stations. Yeah. Uh, there's also like an emphasis on exploration, resource gathering, crafting, trading, and you know ship combat as well as actually you know shooting combat within within stations and that as well. Um, apparently, it's going to be fully destructible environments. Uh, so this, these yeah. these guys, right? This um, frozen bite, right? They've mm -hmm. went from Trine, the Trine series. If you've heard of it, have, mm -hmm. have you done and Matt? Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, I mean, it's it a it's good. a side scroll, really good fun. It's co op as well. Um, I've played it quite a lot with mates. It's a great game, but it's a side scrolling mm -hmm. platformer with you've got an archer, a warrior, and uh, do you remember the three Vikings? Yeah, it's a oh, little, yeah. a little bit like that. It's not fully like that. So one of them's got a shield, and he uses that to kind of deflect things, and people can stand on it. That's the warrior. As a maid, you can like create boxes and platforms and stuff, and and traverse, let people traverse the environment. And then there's a archer that can swing, like cast a rope and swing around, and then obviously can shoot things from a distance. Um, great games not particularly interesting stories it's like there's a trine let's get the trine we've got the trine done you know but it's it's fun but it's what? so different they went from that to a million miles an hour to fully destructible environments mmo which is fucking hard to implement by the way mm -hmm. and and in space and building and whoa yeah it looks it looks insane what they're promising kind of thing you know i mean they're going into sean murray territory so yeah like uh, I, oh, 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 oh. yeah exactly so like if <laughs> i don't i don't know how they're going to deliver it but if if they're even anywhere close to it i think it's going to be an incredible game just because of the fact that being able to build you know space stations build your own spaceships you know program them you know kind of properly as well but MMO, uh, they're going to need an economy a really well balanced economy for that mm -hmm. and it's going to be really difficult to build mm -hmm. anything meaningful with a good economy i know i i have no idea on how they're going to do it but i am i am definitely getting wet for that shit right now i want it i want it so bad but are they going to deliver only time will tell <laughs> so would i be right in saying that it's kind of like space engineers but they want it to be an mmo well is yeah that, is that it doesn't look as complicated as Space Engineers to me. Mm -hmm. It looks like it literally is. As I said, it looks like... Do you know when you, you open up a model in a, in a, from a model box and, and it's stuck in these... It's stuck in the square things. It looks like those square things are being used to create the boxes, not actually popping them out and creating them with individual parts. <laughs> They're just... The squares are being used to create. That could just be the early access kind of graphics. Mm -hmm. An MMO again suggests it's a RPG of some sort. It's going to have an economy. It's going to have a world. It's going to have mm. NPCs and characters. It's yep. going to have. Um, There's factions already. Apparently, it's yeah, going to factions. be Empire and Kingdom. So I like. I, I mean, I don't know. the the title MMO puts me off a game these days as well because I'm I just don't have the time for mm -hmm. for that investment. And as soon as you involve other people in an RPG, it, it makes me. It makes me want to play it more, and I don't have that time, you know. That's why yeah, I don't play WoW, yeah. etc. But that's just me. No, I'm I mean, with you, man. MMO is kind of synonymous with time sync, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. And I don't mind. I look at games like Rust, where you've got a minimal community per server, and you can build, and then you're wiped in two weeks or in a month, you know. And that's like a two week humongous time sync, and then I can I can go right. I've I've had enough now, or and I'm, yeah. it's affecting my life too much. That's great mm. for me because I can go mental and then stop. But an MMO is forever. And yeah. uh, but I'll keep my eye on it. It does sound interesting. Like, it sounds mm. interesting, but I, I, I'm very skeptical going from trying to this. Yeah, it's... I mean, I'm definitely skeptical, but I'm like, come on, please, please begin. Like... <laughs> I mean, unless they've made a lot of money from trying and they've increased their mm. development capacity hugely because trying's been around for a long time. There's four of them as well. So they'll have mm. made money from all of those and they've been included in lots of bundles, they'll be included in lots of 
they're on all the stores and I think they're probably on all the consoles as well now, trying. Um, so maybe they've made a lot of money and they've got the resources, mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm. Danny, what are, you, what are you looking forward to this week? Well, they've just released a Dying Light 2 gameplay demo teaser thing. And I think when I talked about it in a previous episode, I, I mentioned how they were building upwards and making more things like entrable buildings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and they look to have been actually implementing that, which is good news. It means there's more variation apart from just jumping and clambering on the outside of things. It's more moving through as well. Mm -hmm. um, the gameplay teaser looked a bit on rails, as they always kind of do. So I'm not 100% sure. I feel like it's, you know, when you, if you, if you looked at a trailer for Dying Light 1, for example, and then you play the game, when you can move your mouse a lot quicker and things are a little bit like more hectic, they type with the teaser, they went through it quite slowly. But from what it looked like, a lot more, um, a lot more wacky, not like a, an account of how it happened. It's more after the fact and people are like forming colonies and stuff so right. take far cry 3 for example to like far cry 4 or 5 whichever one get, gets really ridiculous with just like the wacky colonies and stuff but it's they've changed they've changed the sort of atmosphere of the game quite a lot it's no longer just like this has just happened you're just dropping in at ground zero and it's it's happened you're it's like in the, the 28 years later yeah type exactly scenario. Yeah. <laughs> basically yeah <laughs> typical so zombie fair of, these days <laughs> yeah so there's a lot of um there's a lot of like what's the word like foliage overgrown stuff it looks a little bit more pretty in that regard it's not just like a basic bitch hill with some grass textured on it it's like a bit more a bit more thought out basic um, bitch hill <laughs> it seems to yeah basically they've done a from what i've saw from what i've seen they've done a few more um like interactions with like the zombies and stuff as well which is quite interesting you can now like actually use one as like a drop shield so you push them <laughs> out of a or off an edge and you land on them breaking your fall kind of thing a bit more with that um, was this a it, cinema, cinematic controlled gameplay no, video? Yeah, basically. Oh, yeah. So cinematically controlled, but in the engine. So it was actually gameplay right. from from the game, but either scripted or just someone's really bloody good with an Xbox controller. I <laughs> highly doubt that. But yeah, it was forced. a little bit on rails, a bit forced, a bit slow for how you would play that game. But overall, it looks really, really cool. Like they've got lots of darker, more rather than scripted story moments like actual just like you might be in a particular building you'll drop through the floor panels and then you'll be into like a massive pool of zombies it's not like part of the story it's more just sporadic stuff that keeps cropping up with with playing through the game and um like i mentioned moving through the buildings now like properly big skyscrapers like dropping through floors and making your way around they've also showcased like parkour should be a lot easier because you come with like a parachute now so you can like jump mm -hmm. off a ledge and then parachute for a bit rather than the grappling hook which they had in one which seems to keep the parkour flowing a bit a glider or a parachute it's i don't you don't actually see it it oh. looks like a something like a glider you kind of like float along a slow decline basically um but overall i i don't know I'm, see i i, I think that, to it, but... i think that when they announced that trailer i haven't looked at it but they uh they put um dying light up for sale on steam i've already got it on ps4 but i haven't completed it got a bit boring playing mm -hmm. on a control pad i don't really like playing fps games on a control pad um, mm -hmm. so i've grabbed it on pc and I'm, I'm gonna get on it again i think at some point soon I liked yeah. it. I liked the game. I just didn't like the control method on the piece on the PS4. Yeah. So they didn't. Um, from what I saw on that uh, thing, not showcase any weapons per se. They've mainly just focused on core mechanics of movement and stuff like that. Right. I don't know if it's the first of many trailers, but to sort of summarize it, I'm not sure if it was what I was expecting with the aesthetic of the game. It's weird. I don't know. We'll see. I'll no, probably keep, pick it up anyway. Keep an eye on it, yeah. yeah. Well, would you pick it up with that kind of face on you? Would you be picking it up at full price when it gets released? Mm, depends how much full price is for PC. Because if it's like a full, f I think Dying Light, I paid forty for when it first came out. I don't think I would. I don't think I would. I just go back to Dying Light One. I've got it. I paid less for that on both platforms. 
<laughs> well, all right. <laughs> I bet, I this bet was when less was than tw- less than right, twenty mate. quid for it on both platforms. <laughs> Flexing them deals. Yeah. Like, oh, I fucking oh, love look a deal, how tiny, Look how tiny the <laughs> amount of money I paid. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what it's all about, mate. <laughs> Put I, it in a humble bundle. Much, I'm very much the same. I look at stuff and I, I like to go up people like. Do you know how much I paid for that? <laughs> you won't believe it. Yeah, but you're God. from Yorkshire, aren't you? I am. In fact, the guild we're in in WoW is called Yorkshire. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, yeah. I, I, I am an officer of Yorkshire. It's all I've wanted in my life. Uh, have you got Have you got the entire population of Yorkshire in the guild, or is it just you you and a mate? No, just ten of us. Just ten of us. That's good enough. It's good That's enough for bad, a guild. Yeah. It's a good raiding party. Maybe for... I don't know, actually, how big were the raids in, in Classic? Forty. Oh Both right, okay. Went and got up to that because it didn't How release with that, did it? It was it was like five man raids initially. Um, there was I don't know because Molten Molten Core was forty man, and I thought that came out at launch, but I could be wrong. No, Molten Core didn't. I think the the, the biggest at launch, I think it was Blackrock Depths, wasn't it? Up, um, oh yeah, oh, what upper Blackrock where it was ten man. It was but that ten? The, but then there was another one you had to do it five man. Even though it was a ten man in, I don't know. We're derailing this. This is supposed yeah. to be Danny's section. Oh, Danny's finished. <laughs> Fuck Danny. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Look at his face. He's so upset. No, I'm really I think, not. think we should entitle this. Uh, entitle this. Chris has got his swear on because that's all I've done this episode is swear. <laughs> You've infuriated me, guys. I <laughs> thought I was going to be the one swearing. If I'm honest, like I am, like dropping the bombs all the time. But I'm I've, been, usually, I've been good. I've been good. I'm usually <laughs> the consummate professional here, but uh, not today. <laughs> Right, anyway, Episode 73, Chris's swear jar. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, moving on, moving on to my game, which I was trying to get in last week. Um, oxygen not included. And yes, there are berries, but the berries are actually maggot berries. Okay. Right, I'll explain in a minute. So, have have you heard of oxygen not, not included? No. Not at all. I, I have, haven't. I've not heard of maggot berries. No, You've heard of it, Matt. But, so, Matt, no one's heard of it, but have you played it? Have you seen anything to do with it, Matt? I've seen a little bit. Is is it kind of like a space simul uh, space station simulator? Space colony simulator. So you start oh. out with um, simulants and you three D print your guys, right? So you three D print these simulants. Uh, it's a two D. Um, do, do you know Fallout Shelter? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So it looks a little bit like Fallout Shelter, um, but you start off in the middle of this rock. I I played a hundred and sixty odd hours of it in early access, and it got released out of early access in february um no hang on february 2017 it came out um and it was july this year that it's come out of early access finally one of the very few games that has been in a long-term early access and has been done very very well the developers have communicated with the community con- consistently they've modified and changed the game appro- in appropriate ways based on feedback and it's every time i played it i played it almost to the end game and then it just got it's something happened to my base. Like you have to manage everything. You have to manage, as you can probably tell, oxygen, simulants, health, simulants, sanity and stress, um, their food intake. You have to grow things. You have to advance the growth. You get a full like electricity thing. You've got different um, layers of um, of management. So you essentially start off with a simple management layer. You can manage your water pipes, your electricity wires. Uh, you can manage the gases, which is unforeseen in any kind of game so when you 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 start off with oxygen obviously and you'll run out of oxygen if you don't start generating it um or getting it from somewhere else so i can't remember exactly how you generate oxygen to be fair so much with plants no plants create carbon dioxide um depending on the type of plant splitting, splitting and water i don't know from ice um, i can't remember there's a lot of different ways oh, to do everything sense. but one of the beautiful things is is you, you like you'll you'll dig into a, a natural gas geyser and then all of the gases have different weights as they do in real life and they all move to different parts of your base so the simulants if you've got your your simulant kind of bedroom at the top and that will start filling with carbon dioxide so you have to pump that down into your basement and then fill your basement with carbon dioxide kind of processes or something that absorbs it or uses it or you can pump it in lots of different areas different plants require different oxygen uh, different gases um different uh there's heat as well to manage because some areas you'll get into like again a natural gas geyser will pump out heat at like 500 degrees celsius and you have to manage around that you've got lots of different classes as well each simulant can have different jobs so one can be a farmer one can be a uh, one could be a scientist one can be a, a 
better at fighting and being a warrior. The very, very micromanagey um, to the point of kind of dwarf fortress type uh, micromanagey where you're individually managing the skills for each. Uh, and, and they've all got their own skill trees as well. And they've all got their own personalities and different traits. And some of them get stressed easier than others. And it's like a proper management sim. I absolutely love it. I played it for, for ages when I played it. Um, and it's another it's another game by Clay Clee Entertainment who did the game I talked about earlier, which was Don't Starve. Uh, they've done a few games, but this one in particular, I think I prefer it to to Don't Starve. I I, I really like it, and I haven't played it since it came out of early access, and that's why it's on my looking forward to list because it's changed. I loved it, but apparently they've changed it, and some people are on the fence of on the side of the fence of they've changed it for the much worse. It's awful now. You've made it too easy for people. You've pandered mm -hmm. to the people who said it was too hard, and then there are other people who are like, actually, no, I think you've done the right thing here. It's 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 right you know you've you've leveled it out and you've balanced it and you've made it especially early game it can be very difficult if you don't get things done in the right order like if you don't build the toilets uh, which you don't know about until everyone starts pissing everywhere and contaminating <laughs> the fucking water Yorkshire. Um, <laughs> if, if you don't like if you don't everything can be reused and everything can be generated in different ways it's brilliant it's absolutely wonderful and like like games like dwarf fortress and rim world you, you you might start out with like a, just the bedrooms, for example. You might start out with a, a bunk area where everybody bunks. And then eventually you have to start building out individual bedrooms. And it's better to build like the farmer's bedrooms near the farm area. And it sounds simple, but it's something you learn as you play the game more and you figure out what's the better way to do it. It's a like management... Optimization and management game. Yeah, yeah. It's the, yeah. This, the core part of management games in that you will learn that it takes this guy... 0.5 of a second more to walk from here to here than it would if he needs to go and like then you might want to start creating canteens in different areas so they've got better access to food people who can cook as well and then oh it's crazy i love it absolutely love it and i'm very much looking forward to playing it I would you, you buy just it? Sold another copy yeah yeah no i'm, I'm in i'm in i'm like yeah i should have used that list. god damn it every week every week i do this <laughs> I do. I how do you think That's... I felt last week with Metal Wolf Chaos when everybody was just staring at me like, what the fuck have you found? <laughs> Why aren't we playing this right now? Oh. <laughs> cut, cut, we've got to buy this game. <laughs> That's it so... there, we just bait you into a false sense of security. We all say that it's amazing, we'd buy it when it's not a sold game, but when it comes around to selling it, we're really harsh and horrible. If, basically, if you don't <laughs> like, if you don't like really micromanaging management games, don't get it. It is yeah. not for everybody. But the fact that you're ju not just managing the standard things like the food, hunger, stress, and all the other stuff you see, but you're also managing the oxygen, it's, mm -hmm. it makes it very, very difficult. And even like, oh my God, the heat of the water. Like, you'll start off with standard temperature water, but the more you do with the water and the more you process it and uh, the more you kind of transfer it around the base, it changes temperature depending on what areas it goes through. And you've got heat overlay as well, so you can see this area is hot and cold. But it's not just a simple case of send it to this area, heat it up, and then send it back because it loses temperature as it's coming back. And you have to insulate pipes and you have to create water tanks that are all different temperatures. And then you've got the you've got the worry of contaminating those water tanks with different. Uh, and then you've got the brilliance of chlorine as well in there, because chlorine will... Um, oh, no, fucking hell. You've also got, like, there's this mould. I um, forgot what it's called exactly, but there's something that, like, surrounds the base, and it makes all your simulants sick, but you can process it and make it with uh, chlorine, for example, and clean it. And you have to clean things before you bring them into the base as well sometimes, depending on where you are. And these are these are lessons you learn very hard because you suddenly realise, why is everyone shitting everywhere? What the, what the fuck's going on here? And then you turn your germ overlay on and you go, oh shit, everyone's got AIDS. You know? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's brilliant. It really is well done. And I hope it's as complicated. I hope I don't fall out of love with it when I play it again. There's a slight worry there because I liked it so much. Mm. But I don't think I will. They put too much effort into the systems and there were too many little things that they could have tweaked and little things that they could have made better to for me to for them to have fucked it up basically, have messed it up too much. So yeah. Um good. I'm going I'm gonna play that soon. I've I've convinced myself to play it tomorrow, I think. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> nice. forego my five minutes of don't starve that I've got I've got planned and have a go at that.
They should have continued the naming for that, though. They should have gone from don't starve to don't fucking touch anything, Jesus Christ, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> if it was called that, I would buy it in a heartbeat. Oh, shit everywhere. <laughs> Do not bring space chlamydia into the base, Jesus Christ, simulator. Yes. Don't breathe. Don't trust a fart. Don't. <laughs> one, th it's one thing I never did in the in the base as well was um, there was a breed. There was a breeding um, element. You not not between the simulants, but you could breed lots of different types of animals. Um, but I, it was really complicated. I didn't understand how the system worked. You had to build a feeder system and then get someone to teach them how to ranch. <laughs> You see, Chris, when a, when a mummy dog and a daddy dog love each other very much, they do a very special dance. It's oh. called gene splicing. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not far off. It's not far off. There's also, uh, when you play it, when you play it, and you're going to play it, when you play it, do not over print simulants. As soon as there's a simulant ready, carefully prepare for him. Don't just just print him because he's available. That was a mistake I made, and you end up with 16 simulants and not enough food, and everyone's spreading shit everywhere, and it's just awful, you know? Um, can you not pause the printing of simulants? You can. Well, it's soon I've as... done his legs. As as <laughs> put, it, put it on hold. Like, like the latest season of uh, Red Dwarf, where they're, they're printing that ship, Captain. Sorry, recently watched it. It's uh, fresh That's in my mind. Man. I need to watch that. I was watching it last night, but I haven't watched any new seasons. Oh, brilliant, man. I think they're as good, you know. I've been, I've watched them all through from one all the way through to 12 now and recently got right to it. Anyway, this is a gaming podcast, not a Red Dwarf podcast. So, um, <laughs> Matt? I mean, I do have something to talk about, but we're running late on time, so I can save it for next week. Oh, that's very and noble I'd... of you. Well, I want I want a little bit of time to talk about it just because it's, it's quite a quirky game and it looks quite fun. So I'll okay. save it for next week. No problem, no problem. So nothing in Hardware Hot Pants again this week. And again, we are going to be changing our format ever so slightly. So we'll do the out, out, out reduction. Nice. Is, is that that? Okay, we'll go yep. with that. English, how yep. does that work? So <laughs> that that is the end of the show. Thank you very much for listening. And we do hope to see you next time on Resident Evil Arcade. Thanks for listening. And special thanks to Leon for turning up and listening to us blather and give his opinions on games. Hopefully you've enjoyed yourself. Oh yeah, hell yeah I have. And it's been a lot of fun. And... I would be uh, up for coming on any time you guys need it. Oh, so. I wasn't going to invite you back, but all right. Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're coming across a bit desperate. <laughs> no, do, you, do you need some friends, Leon? Ooh, podcast friend. <laughs> we'll, hey, book we'll, the stream night for it, guys. Come on. Yeah, well, do you know what? I was going to ask him afterwards if I can uh, maybe jump in with one of his streams at some point. And... Totally uh, should, man. Do totally it on, should. If you do it live, then that's them. They've, they've dedicated themselves to it, you see. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, so thank you very much. And we will have you back, Leon. Honestly, we'll, uh, it, it's been a pleasure. And uh, always nice to have some other people's opinions and people who do a bit of bloody research on the games that they're uh, playing. <laughs> <laughs> dig, dig. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to print this off and we're going to roll it up and I'm going to slap you with it at one up. <laughs> Tell you, it's, it's gamefax.com or something you've printed that off <laughs> some obscure uh, website the way back you know machine you've I'm, used I'm gonna take i'm gonna take that as a compliment i spent 45 minutes writing this out i had the wikipedia page open and everything <laughs> copying and pasting yeah i see <laughs> it's hard to hold a button and press another button at the same time chris god oh yeah oh over to you dens right so if you're wrapping up, uh, you can watch all of our uh, shows on youtube.com forward slash Resonance Arcade and visit our website at resonancearcade.com where you can find info about the show and links to all of our other social channels. You can follow us on Twitter at Resonance Arcade where we publish show announcements and news. And finally, you should join us in Discord on discord.resonancearcade.com where we hang out and discuss all things gaming. Sometimes. Occasionally. Occasionally. Um, anyway, Leon, I didn't. I forgot to offer you a chance to pimp anything that you want to pimp. So feel feel free right now before we close the show. That's cool. Well, I mean, I uh, stream as I said earlier every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday uh, from six thirty UK time. Uh, on a Monday, I play the forest with the Rotty Pack guys. On a Wednesday, I play. Uh, well, we call it Wet Wednesday. So I play a Risk of Rain two on Monsoon difficulty. And then on uh, Fridays, it's just sort of like whatever I fancy playing. At the moment, the flavor of the, the moment is the uh, is no, no Man's Sky, playing a lot of that at the moment. So, uh, yeah, come come by to twitch.tv forward slash Govier, G-O-V-E-R-Y-E-A-H. That's a mouthful. And uh, <laughs> all that is left to say is goodbye. Thanks for having us. 
We'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye. See ya. Bye.